Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 461. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, ready to watch some Nickelodeon slime time for my Super Bowl party. So these, uh, bu- 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 the, super, the Super Bowl, the no, game. I'm not doing that. That joke is no. old as oh, the sky. But it's my favorite. I'm not, I'm not giving yeah. up on it. I'm not nope, giving up. Nope. N- never surrender. No, that's, yes, the one sporting event I watch every year. I love it Uh, because of uh, commercials. uh, I I mean, big ones we're expecting to see is, you know, Deadpool and uh, that's all that's coming out next year that anybody cares about. (laughs) Deadpool and Deadpool. Maybe they'll show it twice. Deadpool and Deadpool. Yeah, probably lots of Disney sequels. And we'll talk about that in the news. Oh, yes. Uh, We get there. Yes, we will. Uh, Yeah, so uh, the the Dream Team's back together, folks. Charlie and I will be talking about uh, our dear pal madam webb we're gonna do a retrospective on her comic history in a thunderdome so stay tuned for that uh but before we get deeper into the world of nerd we gotta thank some very special people that make all this possible that's what I do. I like to give homage or homage, if you prefer, uh, to the fine folks over on our Patreon Super Squad. If you visit patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, you can check out our wares for one week for free uh, and enjoy the programs that we put out. Todd and I do a great show about comics called Spinnerack. Uh, I have a program where I team up with a guest to talk about a classic season of a classic series and have a good time. Um, and yeah, th- there's a number of folks uh, who we owe our life's blood to, who make it possible for us. On the Friends with Benefits level, John Sedorf, the awesome Phoenix Sisters cosplay, Brendan Myers, Corey in HD, and friend of the show, Matthew Keel. On the BFF level, Sean Stella and Henry Nias, the Nias family, and my friend Missy Merchant, uh, we are grateful for you. Again, patreon.com slash Unite. Check us out. Uh, for seven days, and then if you like what you uh, hear, stick around because we would love to have you. Oh, give it a week, th- you'll take off the weight, as they say. Oh, right. What's the weight? The weight of uh, what it costs to belong to it. No, that'll be putting the out waiting the weight. for all our awesome content before oh, it goes on our uh, right stream. Tom Petty said the waiting is the hardest part. Oh, July of 1949, giving us by what I feel like is an unknown publisher, or if I squint real hard, is that Mickey Mouse ears I see in the upper left-hand corner? <laughs> I can't tell. Um, oh, yes. I don't know, but this was, uh, this, uh, which you're seeing, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, is uh, or on our Patreon stream, is Crack Comics with Captain Triumph, who I almost thought said Captain Trump. I was a little scared for a moment there. Uh, meets Mr. Pointer, Finger of Fear. Now, let me set the scene. The words that I just read to you are literally in a 24 by 36 framed wooden, you know, wooden frame. So, you know, sets the stage like he just walked in and those words were written on the wall. Uh, He is a blonde gentleman in a very plain red tee, short sleeve tee, uh, white slacks that are blouse at the side, kind of like a imperial officer with the what do they call those, Todd, with it where they're, they're they're bumped out like that? Uh, kind of like, like pantaloons, uh, yeah, like, kind of like riding, the riding, the riding pants. Riding breeches, right, exactly. Uh, with a big belt and then a pair of brown, uh, seamless officer boots. Again, this is kind of a Star Wars outfit, to be honest with you. Uh, cause it's got the pants and it's got the boots and a giant belt. And those are, those are two of the three elements that you've got to have to have a successful, at least Rebel Alliance cosplay. And he's standing in front of a uh, raven-haired, green dress-wearing lady who is uh, bent aghast in a scared position. There is, in shadow, a fingered glove with an index finger pointing at his crotch. Okay. Uh, And that's all we got. So, Todd, Um, I I would now before we get on to obviously part two of this, let me simply ask you as a consumer, you are uh, you're well, gosh, you're you're older than my old man. If this was July of 49 because he was born September 49. I'm not. Yes. But the 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 hypothetical individual is walking uh, into his local drugstore and on the spinner rack sees this. 
Uh, your other choices would be Superman, Batman, or, you know, Archie Comics. I don't know. Do you pick this and why? Or why not? Well, I think the best part about this is I uh, I was looking at the first couple of pages and it gives you kind of like the summary of who this dude is. It says, when Lance Gallant touches the T-shaped birthmark on his left wrist, the mighty spirit of his dead twin brother, Michael, emerges with him to form the invincible <laughs> Captain <laughs> Triumph. The twin he ate in the womb. Arr, arr, arr. I absorbed your power. I mean, the only thing I could think of it's close enough is Firestorm, where it was Ronnie oh, was, Raymond yeah. and Professor came together to perform Firestorm, uh, Firestar, Firestorm. Sorry, and yeah. this is this is very similar. But I did not expect the fact that his dead twin brother Michael would be right. helping him to become Captain and Triumph. I don't know what his power set is. They don't go into anything, but it just says that, his, and they his, show his little his tea, power. Uh, set, his power set yeah. must be, must be those abs. Oh my god! But anyway, Todd, as uh, you've illustrated here. Uh, the cover in the story in the origin that you described is not nearly what we're really packing here. It's what we found uh, as an advertisement. You said this wasn't on the back cover, but it was within the comic. Oh, um, even yeah. better, Charlie. I can tell you, as I was looking through the pages of this comic, yeah. um, not only is there one ad for fireworks, there were two ads for fireworks. At the begin One at the beginning, one at the end. So we basically, the, the big thing I like about these old comics is the ads. And so this had a yeah. full page ad for fireworks by the Rich Brothers. It has the All-American assortment or the No Noise assortment, which is very weird for fireworks. No, And, no, and, and uh, the No Noise assortment is a lot bigger if you're looking at these black white photos. Now, again, uh, with the pub date of July, uh, July the, the publication date in the comic is usually usually uh, three months later than uh, the month when it's released in the, in the, the month uh, there, the pub date is uh, more likely when it's to be withdrawn. Um, so this would have been, you know, in, you know, March or April or May uh, of 49. So getting kids all fired up and excited. So, I mean, Todd, what do we got going on? There's a lot going on, even just in the description. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's for, for a hundred, well, $12 and five cents, you could get yourself uh, a package of 524 packages or over 550 pieces of firecrackers, uh, zebra brand firecrackers, electric cannons, uh, comets, whistling bombs, musical fountains, Wh the whisker uh, biscuit, and all that, like from uh, Joe Dirt, sparklers, a flower pot, aerial bombs, snakes. Uh, that would get you for you could get that for 495. Yeah, I was gonna long, say, yeah, you, display. You, you shot high with the 1205. Um, but yeah, what is the lawn display? No noise. So if, okay. if I might, if I can squint here, uh, best lawn display assortments ever assembled by anyone. Uh, loads of exciting, uh, colorful uh, fireworks, noiseless for your 4th of July, uh, large pinwheels, red and green fire cones. That's what I thought I saw cones. Uh, let's see. Golden jewel, silver cascade, again, flower pots, which I guess are our noiseless, uh, silver wheels, sky rockets, comets, uh, handle lawn fountains, uh, snakes and torches, et cetera, et cetera. Now this is going to increase your, uh, spend by an entire dollar, uh, which in 1949 was probably like $300, but <laughs> Just kidding. It's um, weird. It's weird. Why is it only it has a retail value of twelve fifteen, which is only ten cents more than the other assortment, but it's a dollar more. I know. On sale. That's so not really strange. blowing me away. But Todd, I'll, I'll, math. I'll tell you exactly why. And this is mentioned uh, in caps at the end of each one of these. They do come without charge with punk. P U N K. Free punk. Free, Free punk. punk. Gotta have it. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. Free punk. Someone right. tell us. I'll have to look it up to see if that was a, a common phrase at the time. And but yes. um, yeah. I, and I always love in these old mail away ads um, the menagerie that you have to do. So uh, order shipped uh, by express only. Uh, uh, no. Oh, oh, no. No. Is it say no COD? I don't know. I'm really. A, yeah. Um, no yeah. cash and delivery. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, money order or check. I didn't know they had checks back then. Um what? Nate, of course they had checks. <laughs> I didn't know where checks were invented. I mean, uh, Rich, I always love this. It's Rich Brothers Fireworks Department Company, Department 40, Box 510. Like, you can imagine this huge post office that's a 1,000 miles tall, but it, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So, Todd, a little bit further west of where you're at uh, is apparently the land of the fireworks. Maybe they use an assortment like this to make Mount Rushmore, you know? 
That's what they needed to dynamite potentially, out. Of all faces. Potentially, yeah. yeah. So. so I assume the company exploded in a fireworks explosion. That's the only way it could have ended. So, right, folks, exactly. sorry. Uh, I'm guessing these deals are, you know, were, were available uh, while supplies lasted. Yes, and the supplies went up in smoke. But anyway, uh, someone who I know for a fact, who, re- who again, we are celebrating uh, this episode, uh, who probably had, who probably worked at this company. Maybe she was responsible for their downfall. I am talking about our senior news correspondent, the Jane of all trades at 124 years young. Madam Webb is down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine with all of the latest scoops for us. Let's check it out. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Yes, it's a celebration of Madam Webb for the next couple of weeks, and we want to say thank you, Madam Webb. Uh, we know this is the lunar uh, New Year's today is a celebration. It's the year of the dragon, not the year of the spider, but you know what? We hold you in our hearts, and uh, we can only imagine every time we see a spider, we think of you the web and all the gross things that you're eating. So uh, Every, with everything the, that comes with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we kick off the news this week with a trailer. Cause we're going to get a lot of trailers uh, for the super bowl this week. A lot of them have already launched. And one of those trailers is a quiet place day one. So this is all about the quiet place franchise, which would, this would be the third movie. And this is essentially emergence day or, you know, kind of like, Oh my cat just jumped behind me. I was gonna say, and I actually watched her walk uh, behind your head through the screen of your, uh, your headrest. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I didn't so, want to say anything, yeah. but then she popped well, out. I, I was going to say, I, I've never seen that before. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, and that has, you know, there's actually a cat in the video uh, or the trailer right. too. So you can see it, but essentially it's, this is how it all came to be. And I really didn't know. I haven't seen the second one. I need to watch the second one. Yeah. I didn't know how the uh, creatures arrived, but apparently they came from our space in media. Yeah. I, and it was because April and I were watching this this morning. And I think it, because we've seen both the films, I think and they're both available on Paramount plus, if I'm not mistaken, or at least they were in the past. Um, and I think she remarked, well, we don't even really know where the things came from and yeah they just they just straight up meteorites they fell out of the sky one would assume they were or we'll we'll discover they were in some sort of conveyance some ship or whatever and then yeah they're just they're going to town on new york city and uh so this is all seen through the eyes of a young black woman if I'm not mistaken, did we get anybody more famous in this trailer? Because I didn't necessarily recognize her. Um, Lupita Nyong'o is the lead. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Joseph yeah, yeah, Quinn, yeah. Alex Wolf, and then Demon Hunshu is oh, also in this. He's the, he's the was, lead, yeah. lead, I would say. And he was, uh, I, I, because I saw a headline on screen right or something that said, oh, Demon Hunshu's appearance in this uh, creates a mild uh, canonical flap from the second film. I, because he was the main character in the second film. Yeah, Which well, and this was his origin story, yeah, then. because they said, oh, you know, it was day four, you know, seventy six. They because that's how the trailer starts out. It's a day four seventy six, and you see, uh, you know, John Krasinski and his family around the table having dinner, and then they flash forward a few days, and uh, it, you know, it, it, like five or six days, and it portrays, you know, here's day number four eighty three or something, and they show clips from the second film, and then they show the the, the ticker all the way back to day one. Um, so it's only been it's been less than it's been you know eighteen months that this has been going on ish without me having to do the scary math 365 days in a year so it's a little bit more than that um so yeah lots of explosion they had one of my favorite cliches at the end of it anytime you have a natural disaster that happens in new york you got to blow up the all the bridges that lead out in manhattan yep so we got we got one of those a nice media i don't know which bridge it was but one of the one of the borough bridges that leads off the island you see go up in a plume of flame um so yeah big monster movie to kick off the uh uh, what this is coming out at the end is at the end of April, so it's not going to factor into our contest, Todd. <clears throat> uh, it is June twenty eighth, so this will oh, be right very good. Yeah, of so summer this, films. So um, yeah, we'll have to do our research to see if it uh, if it if it fits the bill in being in our top ten. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, John Krasinski's not directing this one, but he helped. Pro- he's like in charge of this franchise now, essentially. He's oh, okay. Exactly producing it. And um, the funny part about this is obviously the creatures like noise to track them down. Being in New York is like the loudest place in the world. So, oh, absolutely. I don't think this is going to end well. And, and quite honestly, I'd be surprised how anybody figures out that they like noise because it's New York. Yeah. Hey! It's just nothing but I'm moving here. Guys, are you I'm across the ah! <laughs> Monsters. Hey, hey, just... have some, uh, hey, monster, you want to ride in my cab? I'll give hey. you some. Uh. 
what you got to do? Gabagoo. You want some Gabagoo? Oh, they're not over in Jersey. Excuse me. <laughs> they have to yeah, go to Jersey. So and, and really bad New Brandon. York impressions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, check this oh, out. I hope it's good. I'm not normally a fan of prequels, but this one looks like it, it should be decent because, you know, it's probably a self-contained story with focus right. on a couple of people. So that may work. Right. And, and, and you're not and you're not jamming down like, and this is how John Krasinski got his special thing or whatever. Or this is how blah, blah, blah. It's just the only it looks like the only character of note would be Damon Hanchu's character. And sure. I guess I'd have to watch the second one again to really even I don't remember much of the story other than it picks up almost immediately after the end of the first film and you're following Emily Blunt and the newborn and the kids and they wander off and find another settlement where I think Guy Pierce is there or something. I can't remember. I really do have to watch it again. Uh, I was going to say I need to watch the second one. I never did. Uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it before the prequel comes out because if I get a, my right. my movie pass again, not movie, not the yeah. movie pass, but the pass I, I go see movies with here mm-hmm. in the summer mm-hmm. because I can see movies cheap. Right. Ours went up by a couple of bucks, but still is for the two of us. It's, it's 50 bucks a month. Um, which if you go see four and a half movies between the two of us, it's paid for, you know, I, I mean? turned mine off, uh, essentially I think in October. Cause I'm like, there are hardly any movies coming and quite honestly, yeah, we, I we would probably not should, get we, my fill. <laughs> we should probably do the same. Maybe even after the movie, we'll see next week. Cause I just, yeah, but I mean, we still, you know, we'll still go see something stupid. Like went and go, went and saw the beekeeper and we had fun seeing it cause it was so bad, but I mean, it's something we enjoy doing together. So if you were just, if you're going by yourself, which is what you do and you're like, wow, this is a huge waste of my time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Exactly, yeah. 20 bucks so, a month for that service is not a bad deal to see like three no. or four movies a month. Exactly correct. All right, well, moving on, uh, there's a new big screen opportunity to do what? Ah, come on, don't don't make me spoon feed it to you, Todd. Get to the chopper with the Predator folks. Meow, meow, meow. Did I jump ahead? I'm sorry. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. (laughs) Are you still there? You can't hear me? Keep going. I, keep going. I can hear you. Did I, did I mute myself? <laughs> You're referencing another podcast on our podcast. Please stop. <laughs> there's a there's a podcast called Get to the Chopper. I've never heard of it. I did. Oh, well, that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh. No, I, I thought see, it was something see, from yeah. Daily Planet because you no. normally refer to that podcast two or three times. OK, so I wasn't sure that could have been one of the catchphrases I missed on there. One of no, the podcasts you signed up that, for. That, that, I, I wouldn't see how that would catch as a catchphrase because how do you use it? I don't know. They use a lot of catchphrases that make no yeah. sense unless you're like, yeah. So, right. yes, we're yes, getting a, a a new entry in the Predator right. series. Um, essentially, it's a series that has had ups and downs, but the last entry was Prey, which essentially was a the, it was in or the first predator sighting on earth and it was amazing had a lead character right. native american and dan trachtenberg who's also done uh uh the the movie the monster movie uh from new york uh, the, there was the sequel with um uh, well, john goodman the, where they were in the oh, Clo- cloverfield. cloverfield he yeah, did so I he did cloverfield was, lane no oh okay. he did yeah. Cloverfield yeah, the first, lane. The, yeah the first one was jj wasn't it or it was he produced it, it, or it? No, it was it was uh, it was part of his. He produced it, but it was not him. But oh, yeah, there you go. John Don, uh, Dan Crackenberg did um, Prey, and now he's doing yeah. this. So um, he is a huge fan of certain franchises. He's loved the Predator, and he did a great job. So I'm excited to see where this goes. And this movie, um, essentially, he'll be uh, producing it, and it's going to be set in colonial. Uh, 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 so sorry, no, that's wrong. That's the first one. This one, uh, the sequel is going to be called Badlands, which tells okay. me this is probably going to be a western, like Ooh. almost like, like the west in the like o- it, Oklahoma, North Dakota. Yeah, area. you see what works about this, and it even really applies to what we were talking about a moment ago. As far as a prequel that works, is simply the setting is the focus, not all the member berries. Like, hey, do you remember this guy? Do you remember that this thing is going to happen? And do you remember that this is uh, this is how Boba Fett did this thing and that thing? But that's where prequels fail, right? Like the Star Wars prequels. You know, it was like, oh, do you remember how Darth Vader was this angsty little teenager, or how Darth Vader became a bad guy? Well, this is why. Well, this is simply like, hey, the Predators are ancient, are an ancient alien species of hunters, and they've always come and visited going back to you know because prey was set in the 
11th or 12th century, I think. And, you know, in, in North Very early. Well, it was not, wasn't yeah. that early because we had, remember we had like French for trappers. So, oh, so like 16, 1600s. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, if this is set in the bed, maybe this is set during the dust bowl or something, you know what I mean? I mean, you never know, you know, yeah, so, yeah, a wild the makes a lot of sense. Like just, yeah. Like, like, well, I think of like badlands, I think of like, you know, Western. So this is yeah, going right. to be like, um, so older. So you know, yes, yeah, so 1920, like, 18, like 18, 1850s. like 1800s. Yeah. Yeah, prior to a lot of technology, right. but you've got guns, most likely. Yeah, um, right. Maybe trains. So predators on a train, anyone? There we go. Oh, s- snakes on a plane, predators on a train. Yeah, so, in, yes. and, you know, I, I think we're not, I mean, and it's probably going to be a different predator this time because they come back. And so it's not like you're going to have, like, oh, you killed my brother predator. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want vengeance this, for my predator this, brother. This yeah. this time I'm out for some predator revenge. Oh, so yeah. So this is, but <clears throat> prey, as you had mentioned, was a Hulu original, which is the only place that we found. Found it. Did that come out during COVID, and that's why it wasn't in theaters, or was it just not meant to be in no, theaters? No, that really was recall. still at the time when they were like, "Oh, everything's going to be streaming now. It's going to make so much get so many people into the door." And then they realized because because yeah, right. they could have probably put that movie out in the theater, but at that point, I think right. it was because it was probably part of the deal. That yeah, they didn't have the deals deal. for theatrical release with all of the oh, gotcha. actors, so we, that's yep. you got to have those deals in place. So this time, it's most likely it's going to be a film, and hopefully, gets a wide release and makes right. Disney some money, so they can stop making really bad sequels. Oh, wow! <laughs> what a beautiful segue. Um, but anyway, before we do that segue, I'm imagining uh, if this is being announced in 2024, it'll go into production. We'll see it in 26, uh, much like we are with another yeah. release that I'm sure we'll talk about. Moving into talking about the folks over at Disney trying to find their find their ass with two hands, so to speak, and find a way to stop you know bleeding from the face or other parts of the body like they did in 2023 because Disney was Disney was dying. They, I don't did they have a billion any, dollar movie. That was the first year they had not had a billion yeah. dollar movie in like they, I mean, I, but they they didn't really have. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, anything that you would generally consider a Disney level success in 2023. Did no, uh, Guardians did of the Galaxy well? would be the only yeah, Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy yeah, yeah. is the only movie I would say it did really well. But even uh-huh. based on that, it's still not up to the. It didn't make a billion dollars. So yeah, yeah, even yeah, globally, oh, meaning globally, I assume you mean. So it Correct, stayed globally. stayed under stayed under a billion. So uh, Disney's big answer, uh, and again, there was a separate uh, bit with Bob Iger saying, you know, we're just, you know we're going to slow everything down at Marvel, and we realize it's too much too soon, and people just don't like it. Um, but what this is being translated into to a little bit more directly uh, as we're looking at the next uh, three years plus is get ready for sequel town. I would say USA, but it's globally. Um, Yeah. They're leaning real hard into, Hey, what can we do that people can say, Hey, I remember that thing. Um, Let's make it, let's make a ton of them. Um, So yeah, we're looking at a slate, not only this year, but as I said, getting into 25 without a lot of established dates um, and then into the TBD land uh, of films like live action Lion King again, live action. Is it live action Moana? I don't know. Moana was never a thing. live action Moana. Yes. Yeah, there you uh, go. Li- uh, a live action Bambi remake, oh, a live boy. action Hercules remake. The only thing that's not on there. Li- I mean, we're going to go through this list, but the only thing that's not a sequel is going to be a new picture film or Disney animation called Elio. So that's yeah, the I see that. only yeah. original <clears throat> And that's, and that's next on their year. list that's for the next yeah through twenty twenty six as far as we know yeah. there may be other movies that that don't have dates but I mean that's that's just crazy that just shows I that I know Bob Iger says they're going to get into more new properties later on because these are already in the pipeline right but this isn't this isn't the recipe for like I would say getting yeah, people in the door but I'm building new brands because yeah you building building franchise right. you can't you know when you're doing a sequel or a you know another sequel you're just you're squeezing dollars out of people's a, you know aging familiarity with something you've already seen and live action remakes of disney films it just it has always been such a miss for me the, the Aladdin well, you're not one, the target yeah. audience i'm not I know. the target audience that, that's yeah. fair but i mean has one of these been a runaway success was was Aladdin successful? I'm trying to remember. Uh, they all yeah that was a bit, that's been when we talked about movies made a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would have been Beauty and the Beast. Uh, it okay. was The Lion King, Jungle Book. Yeah, um, 
But but I mean, did one yeah, of those them? Are really... the, those are the ones that were really big. I mean, really those big, are really okay. big films. Yeah, I believe when Lion King won, Charlie, that was the number one movie this summer. So or really? close to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Aladdin made like close to a billion dollars too, and, and it was widely wild. panned. That's just wild, wild to me because I just. But yeah, you're right. You hit the nail on the head. We're not. We're not taking kids to those movies. We're not going. We're, you and I are not these insane Disney devotees. Although uh, I dropped, I dropped the news yesterday. My wife is surprising me for my birthday that we are going to Disney after the cruise, and I'm going to Galaxy's Edge. I'm very, very excited about that for March. 1st. Oh, nice! That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, going to build my oh, own because you're, you're going to be in that area. That makes a lot yep. of sense. Yeah. Yep. 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 Rope in. Yeah, yeah. getting there's we, half the battle, as they would say. We, yeah, we danced around that for the longest time, but uh, I finally just said, because uh, I was talking to my friend Tamara, the same person who, who convinced me to take my car and my dead car into Kia and found out that I can get a new motor for it. Um, I just took a chance. So anyway, not to get too far afield off of the story, but to talk about Disney. Um, yeah, they're trotting out Toy Story again. Uh, yeah, let's just do, go through the list. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, go through yeah, the list really quickly. So the only good thing I like about this list is, so basically we're starting in 2024, is some of the movies that went direct to Disney Plus are getting another chance in the theater where they never oh. got it before. Because eh, all these right. movies are very, very good. Soul, uh, that was already done. Great movie. It was good. Um, I liked it. I, I, you might, I, oh, you liked it? Okay, great. Yeah. Turning Red, my, my wife and my son loved yep. it. It's a really good story about coming of age with a little girl. Uh, Luca is just a very cute fun movie about Italy, about two kids. Uh, yeah. really like that. Uh, then we got something weird, and I think, I don't know about this one. Hideo Kojima, Connecting Worlds, he's a video game creator, very famous guy. Uh, yeah. It's kind of neat that Disney's doing this, but I assume this is Disney Plus, because it would be weird to put this movie out, because it's more of like a documentary. So, oh, I don't okay. know about that. In- Inside Out 2, uh, coming June yep. 14th, 2024. It's very been incredible. probably eight years since the last one. Yeah. Uh, Moana 2, this was a surprise. We didn't know anything about this film until like last week. It's yeah. coming out November 27, 2024. So it's one of those TBD movies. Yeah. And then we are getting Mufasa, The Lion King, which is the prequel, December mm-hmm. 20th, 2024. That, I believe that is live action as well. Um, yeah. Then we get into more of these Snow White, the live action remake, which you might have seen yeah. people made fun of the weird looking dwarves. March of course. 21st, Elio, June 13th, 2025. That's the only. Uh, original movie moana getting a live action remake june 27th 2025 so, moana 2 animated and then they're going back to the well and doing the first one as live action that seems that seems rushed i just i i don't remember uh, i mean that's groundbreaking because i can't remember a time that they've had that anybody's really had brass ones that big because that just seems like oh uh, i mean if you're moana crazy for it, you're like oh my god i can't get enough of moana the movie's okay. only like 10 years old too it's not even that that long since i don't even I, I don't even great know film. That, yeah yeah i don't even it's know a great film i loved it yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, we have uh, we have a, a third film in the Tron series, which blows well, my mind. You, you, yeah. Zuto- you miss Zootopia 2. That's oh, coming out yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like Zootopia, so I'm Me glad too. they're getting Me something too. else. Me yeah. too, yeah. Um, but anyway, as I and I, I'm scrolling through, so I guess I missed that. But anyway, about Tron, Tron uh was a hallmark of the 80s of Disney, one of the few things that really yeah. jumped off the screen to me when I was a kid. I was six years old when that came out uh we got a second film in 2010 which for me didn't really blow my skirt up i've only watched the one time i liked it good soundtrack and, yeah and this is uh well the original tron soundtrack was by journey Mwah! Yep. an original journey song on it only solutions i love it uh, but troy aries uh is a reboot all right and then it, the joker is in it or what's his face what's that dude's name what 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 so Tron Aries, uh, is it a reboot? Oh, no, Jared. Le- yeah, Jared Leto. Well, I'm scrolling down reading the notes. Uh, Jared, Jared okay. Leto is cast as Aries. So, you know, things go great when Jared Leto is the star of a film, of a genre film. Yeah, exactly. Reboot. Interesting they're rebooting it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess that would. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Then, like, okay. Yeah, you were talking about Bambi, Hercules. Uh, yeah. Well, Frozen then, 3. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, that. I, I, I know the last Frozen did pretty well. It just wasn't as, like, Probably. groundbreaking. Totally get oh, it. Oh, yeah. That movie is, like, it was a phenomenon. Frozen 3. I know we're going to get probably people saying it's woke. Something happened. It's woke. Don't take your children. But I like the second one. Yeah, I remember liking it, too. It had a a story that did some different things with it. I thought that was all right. Um, Yeah, scrolling through. See, like we said, we said Disney or or we said Hercules. We had said Bambi, both in live action. And then uh, a fifth Toy Story. Um, Toy Story is so un 
unbelievably popular, though, I feel like they can mm-hmm. still make money with it. Um, so it almost I seems never like saw four. I need. I probably need to see four. I like four. I like three. Wasn't three the one with the ending that it's like, oh, God, totally destroyed everyone. With I the, thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. going to be. Well, because that was when they went away from uh, the, the Andy, the little boy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah, thought yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a natural ending. And then four brought right. in Key and Peel and they did some wacky things. I uh, must, and Forky. I, 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 and for, Spoonies, Forky? No, it was Forky. And I, you know what? I'm not sure that I saw it. I, but Forky had, he, he was the, he was the breakout character. He had his own shorts yeah. and all this different stuff. So, so, uh, animated shorts. Not, he wasn't wearing shorts. He wasn't wearing anything. He was a, he's I, a you don't have Forky shorts? <laughs> oh, a, uh, lost merchandising opportunity. So anyway, that ends that list. And again, uh, I touched a little bit on some comments like Marvel. We're slowing down. We know that we're only getting the one film. Uh, in 2024, yeah. which by the time you listen to this, you will have seen the, I'm assuming, seen the trailer. For we Deadpool hope we get 3. a trailer for Deadpool yeah, 3. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it would just be a few months out. And then with Star Wars, we know that we have the Mandalorian and the Grogu film, which is called Star Wars Mando and the Grogu-Lorian. Um, and then uh, Star Wars has been notorious for swirling projects for the last two years. And it's been now it's now past three years or four years going on five since there was a star Wars film in the theater. We did get news today, Todd, very exciting 25th anniversary of the phantom menace. It'll be back in theaters on May 3rd. Are we getting a special edition? It's about time, right? Yeah. Well, that, well, that's, that's kind of how, no, well, we, it, it's gotta be 30 years for a special edition. Remember? Cause uh-huh. that's the way it was with the OT. So, so who's going to get to choose what they screw up and do a new McClunky and have uh, a Jabba? Who, who maybe gets to do the, that? Well, maybe with the Phantom Menace, they'll take Jar Jar out. What do you think? Ooh, the <laughs> Phantom Cut. I want to see the, fa- I don't, I want to see the Phantom Menace. I, I, I don't even all, know if it exists anymore. With yeah. all of, with all of Jar Jar yanked out. So yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah. With 20th century Fox or, yeah, or no, it's, it's just called, 20th or is it just called 20th century 20th century yeah exactly so yes this does mention obviously we've got kingdom of the planet of the apes coming out this year and aliens an alien romulus they're gonna have romulan aliens are they gonna all have pointed ears now correct absolutely wow good deal um so yeah so yeah so disney is they're trying to turn the ship uh and lean real hard into uh milking what they can milk uh because let's face it uh breaking ground is scary and it doesn't always work uh, no. so that's what we got so i don't know man i mean some of these seem interesting but some of them are not some of them as we have said are just not for us you know we're we're two damn near 50 year old guys that are not going to go see moana too because we just don't care or Until whatever grandchildren start happening yeah exactly yeah and then we'll get oh grandpa take me to see moana seven <laughs> exactly i'll be ready for it let me tell you son they let had let me the, tell you rock, about Moana was, One. <laughs> oh, let me tell you about the Rock. He was the future of the DC universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandpa, let's get you into bed. The stories and will tell. The oh, stories my will gosh. tell. Oh my God! All right, what do we got next? So, oh, this is a dust up as old as time. You know, this happened in the first like several pages of the first issue of Secret Wars, right? Uh, Jonathan Hickman puts. Di- oh, Jesus! Thank, thanks, pop up ad. Um, I'll have it? to just riff from memory. Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan Hickman and Sanford Green's Doom launching in May from Marvel. Oh, has he ever had a, he, There was the uh, supervillain team up back in the 70s, but has Doom ever had his own title? I know Kang had his own limited series that you and I uh, read. Doom 2099. Doesn't count. That's not a real number. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's it is a one shot though. So yeah, Doom uh, number one explore. This is coming out in May. Uh, Doom number one explores Doom's ultimate quest for power against Galactus. Again, if you read the classic Secret War, celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, in the first five pages of that, uh, Galactus flies out of the little dome that the Beyonder brought all of them to his planet with, and is like, "I want to eat the Beyonder's energy or whatever." And then Doom uses rocket jets and flies after him. And the two of them get zapped by the Beyonder, and eventually it leads to Doom absorbing the Beyonder's power, blah, blah, blah. So Galactus sucks Doom rules. There you go. Um, Doom teams up with a Valeria Richards. Now, this is the daughter that Reed and Sue had that was in none of the classic comics, and I stopped reading Fantastic Four for, you know, 20-something years, and they come back and they have a daughter who's like a year or so younger than Franklin, who was the kid they always had since the 60s. So, time's weird. Um, universe shaking adventure Hickman and Green collaborate on a storyline celebrating Doom's legacy. So Doctor Doom is, you know, the villain that 
we should have going into this next phase of the MCU, I think. Don't you? I mean, he's like the guy, in my opinion. Charlie, he was he was he he was Kang all along. Oh my, you know, but Kang really is everyone. That's I mean, Kang is Reed Richards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I did hear on the sidebar speaking about Kang that uh, Mr. Majors has uh, had other people come forward against him. So I think he's going to go into hibernation for a while. Yeah, pretty much. He's going to do it. And I wouldn't even compare him to another. I wouldn't say like, oh, he maybe he'll have a career renaissance like John Travolta. And then John Travolta never beat up any women that I'm aware of. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's true that the industry loves a comeback, but domestic abuse is... I think a little tougher and, and for good reason. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it, so yeah, so I, Vic can yeah. come back from, uh, from fighting dogs. Uh, I think yeah. anybody can come I, back oh, if, if they're, if I'd they are contrite and they change their yes, story. It is. Yeah. I was going to say, I, uh, I don't know. I have not done a great job keeping up with fantastic four comics, but this alone embraces the thing that I love the most is that it's a one shot. I can just read it. Yeah, and enjoy it. it's stories. like an annual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an annual. I'm going to talk about an annual uh, when we get into the Geek Easy here that I read that was a little one hitter story. Um, and yeah, it's perfect. So it's something that you can enjoy. Plus, Jonathan Hickman is not only a tremendous creator, but he shaped the Fantastic Four in the last twenty years. So yeah, this could be this could be worth snagging on the old uh, the old. Uh, well, it's not Comicsology. It's Comicsology Unlimited on Kindle. So is it Kindleology? What what is it even called anymore? I don't understand. Well, but anyway, that's where you can it's, find it's it. It's on Kindle, but it's just called Comicsology within Kindle. It's part of their imprint. Comicsology Unlimited is the actual service you pay for. It's not Kindle Limited, so it right. still exists. You, it's just doesn't have a standalone app the, anymore. It's within Kindle, right? Uh, Amazon eating everything. So yeah, anyway, I'm fun. excited for this. Yeah. It does look good. It's probably like a 64 page or one shot, which is good. We'll tell a yeah. complete story. I did like that last year. We got that fantastic for hardcover by Alex Ross. Oh, yeah. I, so I do. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Would like, I would like more of these type of stories where you can tell people to read that versus here's 165 yeah. issues of something. Enjoy. Yeah, dig in. No highlights. Of course, 64 pages in this day and age cost 10 bucks. But whatever. With the Comicsology discount, you save, you know, a nickel. So, yes! I love it. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, and then finally, Todd, I'll let you take this one away. Sonic is, a, it's kind of a sore spot for me because it's a, it's, a, it's a favorite of my estranged son. So, I never saw the last one. Um, but I remember how much I enjoyed the first one. So, go ahead, please. Yeah. Well, um, so Sonic, there's been two big movies. We're getting a third movie, and apparently Shadow of the Hedgehog is going to be in that movie. It's been fun. Jan Jim Carrey's actually been announced. Oh. He's coming back for the third movie. I, I thought I thought you said Sh Shadow of the Hedgehog. I'm like, wow, that sounds like a Batman movie. Shadow of the Hedgehog. No. Na -na -na -na. no, no, Shadow is kind of like the, he's the dark and brooding part of the Sonic universe. But um, like so Batman. we are getting this See, series. I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, so Sonic is huge with the kids. It's evergreen. People my age and younger grew up with Sonic. So he's kind of just been there for everybody, like the Turtles, Power Rangers. And um, the movies have been very good. They've, they, it was really the first one of the first successful video game uh, movies. Well, uh, one of the characters they introduced in Sonic 2 was Knuckles, who knock, Nickel, Knuckles is in a kid <laughs> Nichols. Who, uh, yes, Nichols. Um, he's voiced by Edris Il Elba, so it's great. It's a great casting, and uh, he's just a fun character. They are making a six episode series of this. It's uh, it's going to be Roger Rabbit again, inspired, you know, live action with CGI characters. And this one just looks, it's basically Knuckles going on his own, adventuring and taking on battles with a, with a goofy sidekick. And they're having a hell of a time. I saw this trailer. I'm like, this is perfect for what this is, should be. It's goofy. It's fun. I'm all in. All the adventuring. Well, yeah, that's cool. And it was, and again, yeah, it's, it, 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 it has shades of the, uh, the original where, you know, uh, Sonic found his familiar, which was James Marston, and that was his buddy. And so it's the same thing where James Marston was very straight laced. He was a cop or a, a sheriff or something. Uh, and this time he finds this dude whose name escapes me, who's basically kind of a schmuck, yet he has a hot wife somehow, I think. Um, and uh, he's going to. Yeah, Adam uh, Pally. The, 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 I knew he was an Adam. Uh, I knew he was an Adam. The, the, the woman you see is actually James Marston's wife. 
Oh, that's so, why she looks so familiar. So yeah. this is probably his brother's cousin or something. It's that the neighbor. Some he, was, he was he was in the second movie. Oh, so Adam there was in the second you movie. go. Yeah. All yeah. right. So he's kind of right. like the he's the lovable loser. I believe he was like his deputy. I think that's was James Marsden's deputy. So he was Barney Fife. So this is this is yeah, knuckles kn- knuckles and burning five. All right, well this this definitely makes a little bit more sense. So that's fun, uh, and this comes out in uh, April, so just a couple months down the road. Correct. Um, s- uh, sidebar: Did you see the uh, Paramount Plus commercial for the Super Bowl with Patrick Stewart? I, I heard. Football? I heard of it. He's wearing an old timey football outfit. Oh, it's it's great. Knuckles is actually yeah. in that too. That's so watch funny. the commercial. It's yes. it's fantastic. Right. It's All really right. really funny. Good deal. Awesome. All right. Well, that takes us out of the news, folks. But it is time to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app. We've got to get down to the geek easy. Talk about things that we're enjoying. But invariably on the radio in the stupid Fuber will be a bunch of dumb advertisements with the exception of what you're going to hear right now. It's the creme de la creme. Check it out. Hey, Secret Friends Unite. Let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, Uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, We had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to zencaster.com slash SFU and use our code SFU. And you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now, back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy cover bands playing. Drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So a light week for me. I've been playing a lot of video games, so have not had a lot of time to watch new stuff. But the one thing I did watch new that dropped on Friday was Halo Season 2 Episodes and you, and you 1 watched- and 2. Two of them, because there were two of them dropped as well. So, uh, yeah, we watched this as well, because, again, we've had yep. nothing new. We just finished our final uh, watch through of the collected works of Mr. Danny McBride. And then we're like, all right, let's watch something new. And then this was on. So uh, now, Todd, right. you and I have had kind of differing schools of thoughts about Halo. You and, and yours, in a lot of ways, approach it from the perspective of, hey, the game was, you know, kind of the book was better kind of people where you're like, this isn't like the game. And I'm like, hey, it's a show and there's much fun stuff going on. So, um, yeah. So, what you know, now we're getting into the first season was a little bit more derivative, if I'm not mistaken, because it didn't really follow the main because the main crux of got- what was going on in the game is jumping into what we got right now. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So the so the movie uh, or sorry the TV series based off what they call the silver storyline or uh, universe, kind of like the Kelvin universe for Star Trek. Oh so this is boy! An opportunity to say this veers and it's us telling the story that works best on the screen, so on and so forth. So the first season is out there if you want to watch it. I would say it's. It's a mixed bag. Something's good. Something's bad. If you're a huge Halo fan, you'll probably some things you like about it. Other things you don't. Uh, yeah. Myself, I'm not like a devotee, but I enjoy Halo. Yeah. And I found some things enjoyable. Other things I'm like, um, this is really clunky and yeah. it's odd. Is and it, you can tell it, that they didn't have it, the money. Is it McClunky? Yeah, probably. McClunky. Yeah. So you, if you even compared like Last of Us versus this. 
Um, you can tell they're on different levels. Yes. Last of Us is just a good movie or a TV series. Yeah, well, a long and movie, yeah, exactly. Halo is kind of like a sci-fi original. <laughs> the, best way <laughs> <laughs> the Battlefield Los Angeles. <laughs> kind of like that when sci-fi was making this is what it feels like this feels yeah. like a lot of those adaptations you would get like oh it's the resident evil film it's resident evil but we're doing something a little bit different with it um yeah. so uh season one was kind of a prequel getting you on board with who these main characters was. season two is where it's really supposed to kick off and we are really going to get the moving the plot forward um after watching the first two episodes i don't want to spoil anything the first episode the first opening sequence is amazing. Mm-hmm. The rest of it, mm, kind of bland. Kind there, of, there bl- oh. it does seem to be kind of all over the place. Uh, but again, yeah. as someone who doesn't know what place it's actually supposed to go to, I don't really have a take on that. Other than you know, I'm looking for some kind of some kind of action driving a narrative that's exciting and picking up from pieces of the first season because it's an ongoing story correct i mean you do see like N- natasha mcclone's character is in there and i i couldn't remember mm-hmm. if she died or yeah. not or i like we started up and i'm like i don't remember because that was back oh that was on back in 2021 wasn't it i mean it seems like it yeah, was, it was like, two years ago yeah so i just don't i guess i didn't really remember a lot and unfortunately thanks a lot paramount you could have given me last season on and might have caught me up a little bit now i don't even remember what the hell happened um, i thought there was a previously on Ah, uh, not in the not what not with what we were watching, but I could be wrong. Okay, so I, yeah, I, I, I thought there was that caught yeah. me up really quickly. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this one is 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 kind of like I said, it's picking up. Um, this one is going to be dealing with. I, I think we get foreshadowing that more will be happening with the enemy, the Covenant, which is um, quite honestly, I think the show works best when there is something driving you forward when we veer off to like the side characters. That's when I feel like the show just hits a, why are we with these people? They're so boring. (laughs) Nothing is happening. And it's It's like boring. And they haven't done a great job of kind of tearing. What is, you know, what is the thrust? We've got some drama obviously between chief and maybe the new leader and things like that. And there's some things going on and there's, there's some character moments. Sure. But Wow, it just seems like they need to do something with their pacing or do something that better makes it feel like when there's not action, it's still pretty good. You know, when there's character development and things. And I think that's where they're struggling. It's the rest is yeah. still a little clunky and it doesn't clunky. feel like as good as it should be. And I right. feel like we're not getting more of the action because of money. <laughs> And that's a shame because Microsoft is the biggest company in the world. Microsoft is worth $3 trillion. They could throw like a couple coins at their budget. Just that? Like they'd be just a dude standing there and be like, bing, bing, well, coin to, oh, what's going coin on? To Microsoft, a coin to Microsoft is $100 million. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here's a couple of million dollar coins. Bing, bing, bong. Put a couple make more. Make sh- one hour. Put a couple more ships in there. So, yeah, um, yeah I, just, I, I you know, again, I'm. Uh, with the first couple of episodes, you're right. It wasn't blowing you away with the rapid velocity of the story and the great uh, transitions with the pace- pacing. But who's to say? I mean, we're getting a little bigger picture of big bad guys, eminent threat, which is all stuff you see from the trailer. So, again, not trying to spoil. But, you know, we'll hang in there again. We don't have a lot of other new shows we're watching right now. So this oh. is kind of what's on the radar on the family calendar that this comes on on Friday. So we're excited about that. So, yeah. Um, you know what, Charlie? I do hope we get, though, is Disney Plus showing a trailer for X-Men 97. Give me that, guys. I, honest to God, thought it would be on right now because i remember i did too it. yeah seeing in a february. scratch date that it was supposed to drop in february so big rip off not impressed yeah. but yeah who well, knows yeah we shall see I yeah they this could is be uh i think this is eight, eight uh i think this is eight episodes long maybe yeah, ten. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah, weekly yeah, drops again yeah uh, we get ghost uh starting next week too some new stuff yes. is coming out the super bowl held everything or the, the nfl playoffs held everything back from having right. new episodes so next week everything is coming. it's it's all new again well something that did come out that they did actually drop all at once, which is funny because we're talking about a show on Prime Video, which has a really weird way that they release stuff. Like this time last year, that Daisy Jones and the Six was like, we dropped three episodes, then we dropped two the next week, then one, then three, then whatever it is. And then Reacher was the first two, and then it was once a week and whatever it is. Um, so today, all or yesterday, all eight episodes of Mr. and Mrs. Smith 
starring uh, Donald Glover, who we love, and Maya Erskine, who I'm like, I looked her up and she seems familiar, but just not was not really in something where I'm like, that's her. Um, but uh, yeah, they're Mr. and Mrs. Smith. There are a couple of people that apply to join this top secret agency uh out of it's like the answer to that out of the paper because the first portion of the first episode they're doing a uh, virtual interview where they're just um <clears throat> answering questions that come up on the screen so there's there's no there's nobody else on the other, somebody else on the other end but not somebody they're looking at and uh they get paired together but the pairing is that they are married um, but in this case, I'm trying to remember the original film, which was from the mid aughts with uh, Pitt and Jolie. And it's how they got. Is that how they got together? Yeah. No, they were they had no clue. They were both spies. No, 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 no. In, in, oh. in, in real life. Oh, in they, real life. That's where. Yeah. The, yes, they yeah, had yeah, yeah. a uh, entendre on set. Yes, indeed. So anyway, this uh, film was not that because they were paired, but they were strangers who are now married. Mm-hmm. And yes, they're secret agents and they get they get uh, a uh, an assignment. And they go off and they go off and do it. And uh, yeah, so, the, you know, they changed the premise of this quite a bit. Uh, April and I did an hour long episode. So I think we started yesterday and we finished it up at lunchtime today because we're just we're just watching it we didn't have anything else to do it's kind of a great you know we had nice weather this week but today it's kind of gray so we're just hanging in um and uh and watch it through i found it enjoyable absolutely it's not super gruesome there's you know the occasional headshot and blood splatter but it's not reacher where you know it's just nothing but him kicking the shit out of people um but uh you know there are elements of the original film there's no there there are no characters or actors that like hey i'm making a cameo in it that that i see that i'm aware of um yeah. but uh there there are elements from that original film that kind of bleed their way into this film as well uh the, or this series as well but in a lot of ways it's it's very original uh it's cool it's it's cool and i'm talking to you it's cool man uh cool, cool. I, cool, cool. it's cool 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 uh, I enjoy it very much. And again, it's on Prime Video. All episodes now streaming. And most likely, you have Prime anyway. So uh, I would recommend checking it out. So one question. Yeah. So I am I am of two minds about Donald Glover. Okay. Um, I adored him on Community. But yep. a lot of things I've seen him since in his persona, you know. Is, Childish uh, Gambino. Uh, sometimes he comes off as very aloof. Kind of like, I'm too cool for school. He kinda, I kind of felt sometimes I feel like, I don't feel like he is like sometimes i feel like he's just not all in it it's like he's i'm i'm too cool to be playing this character right um, like he's how does he come off? does he feel like he's yeah do you feel like he's like all in he's like not trying to put on airs um i i didn't find his character to be particularly um sticky if that's what you mean mm-hmm. like hey like i'm i yeah exactly i'm too good for this and i'm the superstar um yeah. i thought he played well off uh, getting my earth okay. scene which again i feel like i should know her for something and i had to look her up and i i was like i don't know you from anything um mm-hmm. so yeah so the the real answer is i think he did fine okay. you know and okay. i think and i think they oh, cool. did yeah i think they did together but yeah you know look at him like him as lando uh in the han solo solo movie yeah too cool for school totally agree um, i mean i he, totally get yeah. it as lando yeah. but it's just like sometimes this persona yeah. comes off like um yeah. i, I like the troy because he was he felt sincere he felt like yeah. you know very passionate and lovely and showing many ultimate tears and i know i've never seen atlanta but uh, when i've seen of him in there he just does once again seems like he's too cool uh kind yeah. of yeah, uh, it's like, is this a persona or is this who you really are? Um, right. And, you know, fun fact, uh, Phoebe Bridgers, is that who it is, was originally supposed to be in this. Oh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Oh, that would have really would have really been something. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. But yeah. I think that would have been. And again, you know, because Maya Erskine is the one who I thought played very aloof. Uh, but that, oh, really? that, but that was the nature of her character. Okay. But again, I'm not really comparing her to anything because I don't really know her as a character. So anyway, and then yeah. secondly, real quick, I had mentioned this in the last segment that I read a standalone uh, annual this week, and uh, you know, damn you, uh, the folks at Screen Rant or Trek Movie or one of them that snagged me for this. But one of the ongoing Star Trek comic series, which I gave up on, I had a subscription, and they just kept, I was not reading them. They just kept piling up, and I was like, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut it off, and then someday some where maybe I'll pick it up again, but they have several ongoing series. And one of them 
uh, is just called Star Trek Defiant, obviously named after the ship that we know from DS9. Um, and uh, it was weird that it had an annual because I figured, you know, if they would just call it a Star Trek annual. But what caught my uh, attention about this one is it was centered around the Romulan character of Sela, who is the daughter of Tashiar, who's a character from TNG early on, that uh, through some wibbly-wibbly, timey-wimey stuff, Tashiar ended up in the past and ended up fathering a half-Romulan child who grew up to be a Romulan officer who, in this parlance, you know, which is we're now set 10, 15 years after TNG, she is a disgraced character. She, she goes back in time to try to right the wrong and, and fix the thing that screwed up her career and ends up running into our universe's version of her mother right before the beginning of Star Trek The Next Generation. And I thought it was a cool story um, because it, it was very fish out of water. Um, they did a pretty good job incorporating, because Picard had a one-line throwaway of how he and Tashi are met prior to TNG, and they built that into the story. And uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so I, yeah, I enjoyed that. And again, it doesn't make me be like, oh man, I got to jump back and get caught up on all these stories. Todd and I both were like, we're doing a spin a rack. We're like, man, we got to get this in. And we often read it at the last minute cause we're busy people. Um, and then, you know, we're, uh, over on Holocron, which comes out the day after you probably listening to this, we're doing our first comic arc there, which I picked Mark and myself and a guest are talking about, uh, the first arc of 2015 Darth Vader comic, which introduces Dr. Afra. Um, but anyway, all this reading and stuff, sometimes it's, it's tough to cram it in, but that's why I've become to, to <clears throat> try to bring this back to the beginning. That's why I'm a big fan of your little, one-off stories like hey you know what i you know i didn't have to do a lot of heavy lifting because i knew this character and i knew their backstory and i could figure out from cues kind of what's happened to them but then you throw it into elements in, in this past story that tie right in with something i'm familiar with with tng uh and and i and then genuinely and i genuinely enjoyed it and again i got that on kindle uh, mixology or whatever the hell you want to call it on your kindle um which you can it's weird. You're still buying those off of Amazon because you can't get them anywhere else. You can't buy them off the app. You actually have to go to the website Correct. to buy them and blah, blah. So you know what? I don't know. There's got to be a better way. Comixology, I loved it when it was a standalone you know, site. I, or st- standalone app. I thought it was easier to navigate, but whatever. Now I'm going to start sounding like I remember when bread was a nickel. Kind of uh. guy, so I'm not going to do that. Man, I don't like it. Man. Uh, so yeah, so I'd recommend, uh, if you're a Trekker, I would recommend uh, giving that one a stab because again, it's a one-off story uh, with some familiar elements of a couple of characters that you probably already know. He'd be in good shape. So anyway, that uh, wraps us up uh, from the Geek Easy. Time to dash out on this check yet again. Uh, once more, I cannot understand why they keep letting us in here, but I've got my phone in my hand with the Air Qantas app. Got to get us to the land down under Tina and hologram tina and the mutants are waiting for us to take along we're taking along a guest this week todd we're actually picking we're stopping in la we're picking up madam webb and we're taking her with us because this week's thunderdome is all about madam webb let's go welcome to another edition of thunderdome <laughs> Thank you, Tina. The Mutants been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And this week, we're doing a primer. So basically, all about Madam Web before the movie just, is released. Just one coat of paint. Here, hold on. I'm almost done. There we go. Okay. Correct. So, um, yeah. So, Madam Web, uh, this is going to be just solely on her first, you know, one of her first three, or her, oh, around the first three appearances within The Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, she I obviously th- was in yeah. um, the, uh, there was, the, the there was, animated series. Yeah, there was a middle one that we did that, that we didn't yeah. read, but I thought these three that I that I picked out were the most important because it was it was her first appearance, and then it was it was a pivotal two parter. Uh, that happened uh, just 10 or so, actually 20 issues later. Um, and the good old Amazing Spider-Man, written by, uh, in 1980, now her first appearance, as as, uh, as we see here in the uh, one of our source articles, was in Amazing Spider-Man number 210 in November of 1980. Uh, created by Denny O'Neill, very famous comic creator, and, jo- and John John. Uh, John Romita Jr. And I don't know if you noticed this. You read the, the comics the same as I did uh, on Marvel mm-hmm. Unlimited. Um, I really couldn't tell because we read issue 210, uh, 229 and 230. And the 229 and 230 is the very famous Nothing Can Stop the Juggernaut, uh, which mm-hmm. we'll get into in a moment. I thought that the transfer of the art 
from whatever the source was over to this was so blocky. I couldn't even tell it was John's art because uh, I've read it. I've owned the original issues and I also have the black and white Marvel Essentials uh, printed. But looking at it in um, uh, on the screen on my iPad on Marvel Limited, I was really like, wow, this is really kind of nasty. Um, but anyway. Oh, really? Get, yeah. I, I, it, it looked and quite honestly, it to me, it didn't look at all like John Romita Jr. because his style now is so yeah. unique. This looks like he was just aping the yeah. style of the times. Yeah. It's it's possible, but it's not. He became the regular uh, artist on ASM uh, subsequently, not even really that long. And then his style was very consistent with with what even you see now, which, again, he's one of my favorites. Uh, and I was a huge fan of his dad's stuff, who is, you know, to me, the quintessential. Amazing Spider-Man artist was John Romita Sr. But anyway, too deep into the woods on this one. So Madam Webb, uh, Cassandra Webb, uh, was, uh, as Todd pointed out, born, born in Salem, Oregon. Didn't know that. Uh, she's paralyzed, blind, telepathic, clairvoyant, and a precognitive mutant. So she was born with these abilities. Uh, so she worked as a professional medium. But in the first story that we read, one of uh, Peter's uh, various in-between girlfriends, who is this bookish girl named Deborah Whitman, uh, who was, anyway, when he was a student, uh, she has an ad and she's going to meet Madam Webb to get, you know, who's a medium, who's going to not tell her fortune or whatever, whatever it is a medium does. I thought uh, a medium was someone who channeled the dead or something like that. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm. I'm a in, medium I, I typically does yeah. speak to the spirits. Uh, right. Yeah. Versus a clairvoyant who can read uh, tarot cards to determine your future. Yeah. Right. So that, that seemed a little muddled in this first, uh, this first uh, issue, but uh, the first part of it had to, th that issue 210 had to do with the kidnapping and a fake out uh, for one of, uh, for the paper that, that Peter had been working for at that time, because he had quit working for JJ and he was working for the Daily Globe, which was uh, on the fourth largest newspaper Apparently, in New York. I was going to say the fourth yeah. largest, which I thought yeah. was such a random thing. I mean, because what right. the New York Times, we can't mention them or no. or well, real the publications. The Daily Bugle, as mentioned in one of the subsequent other issues we read, is number one. Um, so in this universe, perhaps they beat you know, out the yeah. Times. They beat out the New York Times and New York Post. Uh, hmm. They did. Well, those are obviously two and three. But anyway, yeah, uh, Madam Webb. Even though Peter initially d dismisses Madam Webb without having met her as a fraud, he's drawn back to her through the course of this mystery and she uses his abilities to help her rescue uh a a woman and uncover this plot and then which essentially a puts publisher the, the yeah, owner yeah, of the actual right. newspaper who exactly yeah and he puts that paper out of business which means peter's out of a job but i love i did love at the end of 210 when madam webb calls him because sh she knew his identity and apparently was able to read the phone book uh and called him at his i loved his awesome chelsea street apartment that he had from basically the seventies to when he married Mary Jane in the late eighties. It was great. One bedroom apartment with a tiny kitchen and a tiny bathroom. Uh, very, very, and he, he was able to afford it and it was in Chelsea or the Soho area. If you're at all familiar with New York city, which uh, an apartment of that size now will cost you $6,500 a month. And you have nine roommates. They're all, they're in, they're all stacked like cordwood, but back in the seventies and because it was a comic book, he could live there by himself. <laughs> yeah. This, this story was so like, it almost like this was a story that would have been in that Spider-Man TV series live action because it Nicholas was just like the, yeah yeah so so boring I mean kind of yeah. a really boring story taking on some thugs yeah. and I laughed because no super villain um, yeah the, well at the end of the story it was a guy who kind of looked like he was a knockoff kingpin and right but he had uh, hair yeah <laughs> I, I and he so he wants to kill the woman to get the money of the paper. Uh, but he sets the whole damn place on fire to kill her. And was that also she, the newspaper or just I, her place? I could not figure that out. I, it must have just been her place because why would he burn down the paper if he wanted to own well, the paper? Why burn down the whole damn place? Because uh, he was just, even the kingpin wouldn't do that. That's a very, very blunt instrument kind of approach. I wouldn't, you know, it's just not very smart. So, um, yeah. but anyway, yeah, uh, that wraps up. And I, Peter obviously goes to back to work uh, for J. Jonah Jameson because, yes, when Madam Webb calls him, she says, there is uh, these the, the, the cure to your financial woes is in your future. And then it's, you see J.J. Yeah, she was doing a yeah. fortune cookie at that time. 
Exactly. So JJ was trying to call him to, to hire him to be a photographer again. So anyway, we jump forward uh, uh, a handful of issues to ASM 229, where we have uh, Black Tom and the Juggernaut sailing into New York Harbor because they're a pair from the X-Men. Black Tom, uh, his he's a mutant, bad mutant, whose power is, I think, absorption and projection, if I'm not mistaken. Is that what uh, he does? He, he has a cane. He, he can... He I think he's wood. I, his ability I think with he's, wood. He's on my figure shelf. I can see because I have the jug. Yeah, I have him and the juggernaut on my figure shelf. So yeah, he's, he's Irish. He's, so and they, that the the name is yeah. not uh, about his physical appearance. Yes, he's uh, yeah, yeah, which was a gag in Deadpool too when Deadpool was in the prison. So he, his yeah. his abilities is he can manipulate and bond with force energy through plants. So that's why he has the wood stick. That oh plants. I'm like he's not carrying around a like a like a tree or something. But there you go. But anyway, and then the juggernaut. Thanks to he has now the juggernaut. Was was he not a mutant or was he just imbued with the powers of the Ruby Sidorak? Yeah, he's okay. a step step brother of uh, of Charles, Charles Xavier, yeah, and yeah. he was just a normal dude. And he did get the uh, the gem of Sidorak, which yep, basically imbued with him powers of the being unstoppable. Right. Uh, he is the unstoppable juggernaut. Yeah, so he's like the Hulk, but he wears this crazy armor, and he in particular wears a helmet that protects him from psionic attacks, which is, of course, how Charles would shut him down if he wasn't wearing it. Uh, but anyway, Black Tom and uh, the juggernaut are going into uh, New York because Black Tom is, has the same newspaper clipping that Peter had in the last in issue 210 that they're going to snag Madam Webb and make her a part of their organization, which is there's an issue. There's an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation that the Ferengi were going to kidnap uh, Loxana Troy, Troy's mother, for the exact same reason. We'll kidnap her and then she'll be a part of our gang and we can use her abilities to help us you know, make more money. It was the exact same thing. Um, so the juggernaut's like, I'll go get her. And he just jumps off the boat, walks along the bottom of New York Harbor, and he's going to go to Madam Webb's apartment and just, you know, and just kidnap her. And, and they're going to conscript her and run away. Well, uh, Madam Webb, you know, knows this is coming. She has a nightmare about it. And she psionically asks Peter for help. And then you get two issues of Peter trying to stop the juggernaut by any means necessary. He's using all his webbing, which is one of the strongest substances on earth to try to stop him. And it doesn't work. He's throwing girders at him. He's, you know, dumping, uh, you know, uh, he takes him into a construction site and they're knocking down pieces of building and knocking, and just nothing is going to slow him down. The police are trying to shoot bombs at him and stuff, and that's not working out. Um, and in the final analysis, he does get him into another construction site. He, <laughs> he drives a gas truck into him, which explodes. Um, but much like, you know, the, you know, the scene out of the first Terminator, he just walks out of there. He's pissed off now, but he's fine. Um, and Peter's trying to really finally get him in there wrestling and Peter jumps on top of him. He's trying to tear the helmet off because he figured that's how he can get him. But through all this distraction, the juggernaut walks into uh, a pile of wet cement. And much like the old adage about quicksand, uh, he sinks into this 40 foot pool of cement and it's enough to finally stop him cold but unfortunately the damage was done because in the time in between he did get to madam webb's apartment and took her out of this life support chair the only thing keeping her alive and it, and she goes into a coma and because of that you catch up with her at the end of the of the issue 230 and she she has amnesia so she doesn't remember anything about who she was or she doesn't remember peter's identity so that part of it is solved but she's you know laid up and the issue comes to an end and uh black tom is watching through his uh, scope to the construction site which is right on the river and juggernaut doesn't come out he's obviously down i mean eventually he i'm sure he pops out of there eventually but it does not happen at the end of this episode so that it appears and then if you look at uh subsequently if you jump forward several issues uh, Peter does in EASM 239, Peter does visit Madam Webb uh, in the hospital and she still doesn't remember him. So his secret is safe, which of course in this day and age doesn't matter because everybody knows he's Spider-Man it seems, or comes and goes. But anyway, back back then, knowing his secret identity was a big, big deal. Wow. Um, yes, it was quite wow. a ride. But at least wow. this, at least you know, these, yeah, two issues had a, a super villain for Peter to fight and there were some stakes and he couldn't stop him. And I mean, that is one of the more interesting issues of, of Macy Spider-Man at that time. Yeah. 
some observations about this because, uh, of course, Spidey realizes he can't stop him. So he decides, hey, who else can I? So he tries to call the Fantastic Four, the X Men. Right. Nobody's Avengers. home. There's a lot of captions like, see, this is, you know, added notes, see, blah, 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 see X Men, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he goes to Doctor Strange, uh, the Sanctum Centaurum. Oh, he talks Wong's to, yeah, talks to says, Wong. Oops. Phil's man. Oops, he's not here either. Um, I can't help yeah, I you. Know. Good luck with that. Yeah, see ya. Yeah, how, what are the odds that that the three big super teams in all of Marvel would be out? You know, th- uh, they didn't call the Eternals. <laughs> <laughs> didn't call uh, Heroes for Hire. Didn't call the Defenders. Well, they, didn't they call... Were, uh, yeah, could have called the Defenders. Yeah, could have called the Defenders, yeah. The Champions, Champions, Los Angeles. I don't yeah, know. they were broke up by... Yeah. Yeah, and I love the fact that everywhere Spidey went, Madam Web knew the phone number to reach him. Yeah, yeah he, he jumped into the sanctorum, and Madam Web was like, uh, he rang, and then Peter just grabbed the phone. He's like, it's for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, it was that was a real bitch with that. With that big she's got a really good phone doing. book that she knows everybody's phone number. She must have everybody's. had the internet before there was. She had Google before there was Google. It was Madam Web's Google. That's how she. That's how she could have made her money. So, exactly. um, but Google anyway, before Google, yeah. But th- this was Madam Web uh, before it. It kind of broke out, and uh, you know, we find out that she is. She's interrelated to various other Spider Woman characters. It says here in this Wikipedia article that she was the grandmother to the fourth Spider Woman, Charlotte Witter, which is not a character I'm aware of. And but she participated in an arcane ritual known as the Gathering of the Five which was what ended the first volume of The Amazing Spider-Man in 1999, I think. So I remember that because it was a multi-part story, Norman Osborn, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was that. that's what actually ended the volume one of all of the heritage titles at the time, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, all ended at that time. But she gained immortality. Then she became a mentor to the third Spider-Woman, Maddie Franklin, whose name I recognize, so they kind of dialed it backwards. Uh, and she pops up uh, a little bit here, a little bit there, but eventually um, the hands uh, turn to Julia Carpenter, who was the Spider Woman who we met through Secret Wars. She had the original black costume, was a member of the West Coast Avengers for a little while, and then she becomes Madam Web. And I think that's covered in this in this top ten that we're looking at here. Um, and I think that's the, that's the current incarnation of the character. And I thought that's where they were going with the movie. But I think Julia Carpenter is going to be the the vivacious Sydney Sweeney. That's her character because in all of the photos you've seen, she's wearing that exact outfit. So yes, but yes, this the is, movie. This is yeah. So weird. I'm reading the last in the Wikipedia entry. I'm reading like the last paragraph. It's kind of crazy. Um, it says, oh, the, uh, the clones conspiracy, the yeah. dead no more. Well, I, before I, dying from clone degeneration, Madam Web tells Julia to save Prowler. I'm like, and that's when she died. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thanks. Yes, exactly. I remember the clones conspiracy. That was actually a, a decent storyline, uh, that happened five or six years ago. Uh, and I've got a trade paperback that's got all those. So I actually enjoyed that, but for some reason was not really remembering her role in it because again, it was one of those big crossovers that, all, that every character who had ever died in all of Spider-Man dumb was cloned. And the main mm-hmm. person was Ben Riley, who is original Spider-Man clone posing as the Jackal, who was the guy who first cloned Spider-Man. Who was a villain back well, in the seventies? Yeah, it was a whole well, thing. I hope in the new Ultimate Spider-Man book that's coming out, Madam Web returns in all of her senior glory. That would be great. But anyway, yeah, that is uh, that's a lot of Madam Web so far. Um, I will be real interested, particularly after reading these three these first issues and then going over some of this history. That when we when you and I resume uh, after both seeing the Madam Web film, which comes out next week what how like if you're going to be able to pick up on the least regs and stuff and and if, if any of that should work out so i'm you know this is the first superhero film of the year i think um and uh part of me is really looking forward to it the other part of me is absolutely terrified because none of these spumco movies have been good at least in my opinion i mean we started with venom which you said you enjoyed but the second one was dreadful morbius was horrible uh wasn't there another one Nope, that's it. But we are getting craven. And then we get craven. And we're getting two uh 
yeah. Yeah, yeah. which with the Craven Three looks movies like, this year. Absolutely dreadful. So, yeah. Oh, and we're getting a third Venom movie, so which I'm not yep. at all looking forward to. So, um, so yeah, Todd, any other thoughts about Man and Web before we wrap it up? You know, from humble beginnings, who knew that she would be where she is today? Uh, you know what? Uh, she doesn't get anything from these comics. Uh, hopefully, she's got a good deal with the movie. But you know what, Madam Web? We, uh, so. we would be nowhere without you. 461 episodes later, you better believe uh, you're it. still our gal pal and our senior news correspondent. And we're here to support you. And we're glad that um, on company money, we could fly you with us to Australia so that you could stand in front of a hologram and a bunch of weird mutants and you could tell your story. So anyway... Uh, look forward to our uh, breakdown, our, our, C- our super spoiler cast of Madam Web on our next episode, potentially with a guest. We're trying to find somebody <laughs> to join it's, us. It's going to be hard to convince someone yeah. to uh, join us for this fun. Well, yes, the two people I asked, one uh, one was not going to be seeing it, and the other one uh, had had was too busy th- uh, during next weekend. So it might just be us, but Something you know what? suddenly came up. Yes, we will. We will tackle it with the same vim vim and vigor that we tackle everything on this program so anyway with that uh that is the end of the show so friends uh as always thank you for joining us todd where do people find you out there uh they can find me on the uh threads uh at t oxtra at secret friends unite good news threads now added gifts so uh it's almost a complete service now we're getting there very exciting. I am also over on threads and Instagram, C3 Carpenter, spell it out. Uh, I'm also on, of course, our Secret Friends Discord uh, and the Discord of the USS Grand Petoskey, which is the chapter of the International Star Trek Fan Club that my wife and I run right here in West Michigan. I'm privileged enough to uh, head up Region 13 for SFI, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice and would like to meet trekkers in your area uh please visit uh, sfi.org the uss grand potaski website uh and drop us and drop me a note and i'd be happy to help you out uh get some trekking back in your life uh friends as always thank you for joining us i'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trekking 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 be the hero not the villain in a track truck ah uh, the web you weave in hopes to deceive. Thank you, Madam Web. Oh, yes. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite.